The other thing about the importance of MTV and Yo! MTV in particular was it allowed hip hoppers to have an immediate fashion influence on American culture. As groundbreaking as the music was, as music, once you saw this is the way Run DMC dresses, you know, this is the way Flavor dresses, MTV really uh, ignited the fashion influence of hip hop. One of the first people I shot when I came here was Africa Bambata. I just think that he's one of the style icons. And there was a couple of phases. There was like Africa Bambata phase. Obviously, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five were just amazing. Cowboy was wearing like a pink leather suit and Scorpio had like this big fur thing on and Melly Mel was there with his leather whip. I mean, it was just a kind of crazy shoot. Like the aliens have landed and we're gonna rule type of thing, which I loved. You had Flash and the Furious Five and they were doing the feathers and the boots and they were looking kind of like Rick James. You know, Rick James was big then, that, you know, so that's what a, what a superstar looked like. That stuff kind of became dressed up disco. Everyone thought it was going to be much bigger than it was, and it, it never really went as far as, as people thought, like Post a Message and, and Planet Rock. And it was just like a lull for a few years, and like Run DMC was like at the end of that lull. They didn't look like any damn body except themselves. They were heralds of a new fashion aesthetic. I think Run DMC really had a huge influence on the way we dress. They were like the first band to dress like the audience. They looked like that drug dealer hard rock dude around your way. And because of that, they really connected with people. You had people like Run DMC coming out with the hats and, and, and the jackets, then the, you know, Adidas sweatsuits, shell toes with no laces, and the Godfather hats, and the leather bomber jackets, and that's the stuff that we were wearing. We all just want to just be like this. I want a beeper. I don't even care if it don't work. I just want to be looking out like them. They stripped all that down to, to what we were wearing already in the streets. So that's kind of like what fashion really was for us. With that period of time and being unique with the slang we used, the music we did, the lyrics we we made the clothes that we wore were all a part of what was happening at that time. Hip hop then was really, really huge on not biting. So people were branching off trying to do their own thing because they didn't want to look like Run DMC. A lot of times you saw Kane wear the ballet shoes and he would wear silk shark skin suits with the chain hanging out of it. He was a lot more smoother than what Run DMC was. That's the way someone got dressed in the morning and that expresses a lot about their character and who they are. So the fact that Slick Rick turned up in that suit the first time I shot him with that little Louis Vuitt bag, that's awesome. No stylist could have ever styled that. And then you had Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince that were wearing Lecoq's Sportif, which was something that we had never seen that was a Philly style of things. And then that Philly style kind of got meshed into into everything that we were doing at the time. So different groups were bringing just, just different styles into hip hop. You know, Public Enemy was all black and some type of uh, symbolic messaging on a t-shirt or on a hat that was for enlightening. NWA was all black and was against the oppressors. They wore uniforms, you know, and they were the flip side of the same message. And the native tongue was about being natural and, you know, so what, I'm gonna express myself the way I so choose. We never said, yo, what you gonna wear today? You gonna wear that red coat or you gonna wear that brown one? We never did that. We would just show up and have on what we have on. You know, Guru was really into the, he, he, he had this, this African store he used to go to in Brooklyn all the time and get like custom hats made because they were big fans of his writing. He always had the dope koofies back then, you know, and the one he wore, he started wearing it all the time just because people knew that koofy, like there he is, that's cool. Yo MTV Raps definitely played a role in the world overseeing what hip hop was all about. You know, when Chuck D with Public Enemy and KRS one, you know, when they wore those medallions, you would see people from all over now wanting to sport, you know, African heritage medallions. Yo MTV definitely had an influence on the way kids dressed because hip hop was still fresh and new to a lot of the suburban kids who never even got to see a video music box, even though it was a local channel in New York, they weren't up on it. If it was something that's more in the hood, they weren't paying attention. They all didn't care to pay attention. Once it got to MTV, which was already in a lot of white households, those kids got a uh, look into our world, even if they weren't, weren't in that in the hood or never been to a hood. 
I remember watching Dougie Fresh videos and seeing him wear like Sergio Tashini suits and was like, went in my dad's closet and he had Sergio Tashini suits. And he was like, yo, wearing his, you know, tennis suits. He probably didn't know what the hell I was doing, but it was like, I was emulating rappers because there, there were no clothing lines geared towards this culture yet. Watching how these guys dress in oversized clothes as opposed to how the, the school before them dressed in the tighter clothes, um, that's what I could identify with at that time. And you didn't have to have a lot of money to buy the kind of stuff they were wearing. And the way everybody wore their hair, like, you know, whether it's high tops with symmetric cuts in it. And that was empowering. I found out about that primarily through uh, Yo! MTV Raps, seeing those guys, not just reading about it in the magazines, but actually seeing them in that, you know, environment kind of gives you guidance. I grew up in like a, you know, mixed ethnicity area in Maryland and I was watching Heavy D. And I went to downtown Baltimore and I got a whole outfit with kente cloth and a pillbox hat made. And I showed up at a keg party with all my white friends. They were like, what the fuck are you doing, son? What is that? But I was so connected to hip hop and, and Heavy D and all of those cats. Like, I just wanted to be like them. No matter what environment that I was in, it was like, forget that. I was living inside of Yo! MTV. For me personally, I mean, De La Soul's arrival couldn't have happened in a more timely fashion for my life. They just totally validated my presence in the hood. I was always like rocking day glow stuff and flowery print stuff and funky things that the average kid was not rocking in the inner city. When De La arrived, like I was 17, 18 years old, where the crack era was just really starting to blossom as well. And so like, just to walk to the corner store was a task. Cause you know, I was a loner. And the cats on my block who looked at me like I was an alien all my life was sort of like, oh, okay. You, you like one of them De La Soul kids, right? Yeah, yeah, I like that me, myself, and I. That's, that's my joint. And then it's like, whew, okay, no bullying this year. So it's like, because of MTV raps, certain styles weren't universal. Like, you know, the kid in Minnesota might be wearing like a Timberland bucket hat because he saw like, you know, I don't know, Cypress Hill or someone wearing it, you know? It's like, he was like, it wasn't hard to tell. I mean, kids in Kansas City started rocking Tim's and like a North Face. You know, and everyone had a backpack like Grand Poobah all of a sudden and Tommy Hilfiger or whatever it was. So yeah, you could see it. And, and it wasn't just suburban kids. I think it was kids everywhere. MTV, Yo! MTV started to tear down some of the walls of regionalism because West Coast always had a completely different style than New York. Like West Coast guys always dressed more like, you know, like cholos. Like it was more like gangster looking. Like NWA basically dressed like cholos. Like, so that was kind of like the prevalent hip hop style of Los Angeles. You know, definitely it, it helped close the gap between you know, both coast and, and other styles. Yo! MTV Rap serving as that nucleus kind of brought it all together. And it helped us to appreciate and respect other parts of the country. I like to explain to people what we did was we took hip hop and made it an international force. There was plenty of video shows. There were a lot of local video shows and maybe even some national video shows. But Yo! MTV Raps made hip hop an international force. Everywhere we go, I mean, I just never knew until I left the United States to see that this music is bigger over there and they come out and they're more rowdy and going crazy like if it's just a new, new phenomenon that came out. It's weird to talk to somebody in far eastern Europe where they talk in their native tongue. Some of them, but the only English they know is like, yo kid, y'all did that shit, yo. That shit was stupid. And then like, then they go back, yes, man. I was like, yo, like, how do you, how do you switch like that? Like the original Rosetta Stone was your MTV raps. But once you leave the country and you have people talking to you, you go to Japan and you see Japanese B-boys and you go to London and there's, you know, English B-boys and Germany, there's German B-boys. You kind of understand that this music is really permeating pop culture and there's going to be nothing they're gonna, that they're going to be able to do to stop it. And then you saw the fashion. You saw the stuff that we were wearing. You saw stuff become part of their fashion too. MTV showed that rap was a viable 
uh, lucrative, a very attractive and appealing and, and compelling um, genre of music that could be marketed and sold. Like hip hop hadn't been infiltrated, so to speak. The masses hadn't figured out a way to make money from it. So therefore it caused us to create things for ourselves. And, and with that, it became a trend for other people. And then all of a sudden, clothing designers and you know radio and all of these people say, oh my goodness, look at hip hop. How can we participate? How can we become a part of it? And then they infused what they thought was was hot for hip hop. Well, that was the demise of Yom TV rap, was when rap videos started making their way into regular rotation. Hip hop was always supposed to be the anti-music. It was never supposed to be regular rotation shit. It was always supposed to be that this is our, you know, our thing. And then it became mainstream, and then companies became mainstream, and then hip hop fashion became mainstream.